on stage is much different than uh, playing just uh, outside of the stage or, or at your home. It's it's a different experience when the people are, are watching you and you have the, the static in your ears and head headphones. So um, definitely he was nervous. Like even from Zale, we've seen the miss lethal right. uh, in, the, in the last in the last yep. game. So uh, I think on this stage, like whoever wins, uh, the player who wins is the player who makes the the least mistakes basically. And Ness right now is richer uh, with that experience because he played on stage and uh, now he's just playing on stage again versus Johnny Stone. Yeah, I think he just needs to uh, hopefully, like the experience of the previous match just kicks in and he's just like, okay, I've played a set on stage, it's been casted, fine. Now I really need to play good because, uh, as you said, there were a few issues and it's reminiscent to what we saw last True Silver Championship where he got really far. So, you know, the guy is good. Like, he's yeah. getting the results to get at this point, but he just needs the experience and, and just the calm to be able to just, like, look past the being on stage and just focus just on the game. Like he would in any of the Swiss matches in which he went 6-1 in the Swiss. Right. So he's good enough. He just needs to, like, just... So almost place himself back to wherever he's sitting, you know, the previous days, and just sit and just play. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a tough one for him, I think. Absolutely. And uh, his opponent is Johnny Stone. Solo. What do we know about Johnny Stone overall? Uh, not too much. He's, I'd say, he's one of the most unknown players in this top 16. But uh, he's uh, one of the members of the the German team that came out here. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, Flo. Two, they have three representatives here with. Um, Two beers obviously being the most prominent of them, but I believe he has a poker background, which is kind of how that team was formed and put together primarily of, uh, of poker players. So definitely looking to um, see the best from him, but the, the winner of this game, of course, is being another qualification matchup. They're going to be the big um, underdog going into the top eight of the players we've seen so far, because the, the players that we've seen qualify so far are Pokervark, Powder, and Zale. I think Pokervark, you can say, has made a name for himself already over the last couple of weeks. Top four in Europe, nothing to sniff at, and obviously, Delay and uh, Powder, very established names. So this will be our first real, you know, underdog, you know, black horse kind of story going through into the into the top eight. Absolutely. And uh, Johnny Stone, like already in this group, like he did he eliminate Sixo? Uh, I believe so. Was Sixo the other member of this group? Apart from yeah, Sixo was there. Yeah, I believe. So, so he must have done. Right. Yeah. So so he already has uh, some experience there. Or was Sixo playing versus uh, Penny? Oh no, it was Radu, wasn't it? Was Radu? Yeah, he so it was Radu, Radu who came Radu, out. Yeah, he actually okay. eliminated Radu. Mm -hmm. So uh, he lost to, to someone in the group. I don't know if we, if we have the bracket screen ready for him, but... Uh, <laughs> we didn't plan on this. Yeah, we um, didn't plan on this, definitely. But uh, <laughs> he is here. Let's see if there is a bracket screen. Got yes. him. Yeah. Right. So we can see that Johnny Stone, he lost... Uh, he lost to Ness. So oh, this is Ness. actually the redemption yeah, game Yeah, and, right and beat here. Radu in the losers. Right. Yeah. So eliminating someone like Radu, who is the previous champion, uh, the winner of the previous Insomnia, is something... Uh, really nice overall for Johnny Stone. And uh, this, this means that he is not only good overall that he qualified for Swiss, like he is today with the good decks because the players were able to change the decks. Mm -hmm. And um, now he has a chance to play versus Ness and eliminate Ness from the tournament where he already played versus him. So he knows more or less what Ness is playing and he is definitely watching the, the last match as well. And just from a personal perspective, I would love to see Ness go through because it was great for the UK scene as a whole to have two players topping the Swiss at the end of day one. But that kind of counts all for nothing if, you know, Leper went one and two in his group and didn't yeah. make it through. If Ness do, um, now does the same thing, it just feels like a lot of hard work wasted for the UK players. So I'd like to see one of our representatives really uh, make a big splash. In yeah, and, and this kind of tournament just shows that it really is just a marathon and not a sprint. Right. You make it through Swiss, which is a huge achievement, but then you have to carry on through double limb groups, and then you have to make it through single limb top eight to get all the way to the top. So it's pretty huge. And then looking at the classes now, what's really interesting is Johnny Stone is the first mage I've seen knocking about. Finally! Today. So that's going to be cool mage. to see what type of deck that is. I actually just don't know, if I'm honest. Right. I'm not sure what style of mage, because Freeze Mage might not be the best pick in Last Hero Standing. In, in Last Hero Standing, just pure, honest Last Hero Standing with no ban, Freeze yeah. Mage is just, it's a one win deck. And generally, you want your, your decks to be like 1.5 wins on average, as weird as that is to say. You want to be able to beat one deck with it and then have a reasonable, winnable matchup against whatever they try and Yeah, and, and we've seen the power of sweeper decks like right. the Aggro Shaman, right. like Rogue sort of almost did in the last set. You know, yep. Rogue was doing really well. And yeah, Druid, of course, is the go-to one because it's just so favored at, like overall in matchups. But interesting with this mage pick, we do know a lot about Ness's decks, although the Warlock, we never really got to see the end game. It, it, I mean, I am familiar with what that deck is based on what the, the cards that I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not having revealed, he hasn't revealed it on stream exactly, yet, yeah. so I don't want to give yeah. everyone information that yeah. he hasn't revealed. And this is in fact a, is it Tempo Mage with a Polymorph? 
it's going to be... That is an interesting yeah. looking deck already. Flame Waker, Archmage, Antonidas, and a Polymorph is a collection of mage cards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of... Well, it feels like Tempo Mage. But it has a Polymorph. Yes. <laughs> if you're playing Polymorph in Tempo Mage, you play Polymorph Boar. You don't play Polymorph Sheep. Polymorph Boar is you play Mirror Images. You play Polymorph yeah. Boar as well. You you can use it to be aggressive if you need to. It's a card that you can use without losing tempo in some situations. So. And, and there's also a chance that it could be Reno as well, because that's where right. you can get gaps to put like right. Polymorph that's, in. That's and a good shout. Even though you know Flame Wake is the typical tempo mage. And wow. Okay. I, I, Reno <laughs> is a fairly yeah. safe bet at this point, I think. Wow. Yeah, there is not the second <laughs> copy of card we've seen. And Cards Mage. <laughs> so is this like a special mage by Johnny Stone, or is it something we've seen in the past? I mean, we've seen variations of, of Reno Mage for sure, but um, this is a particularly interesting collection of cards. It, it looked like a very tempo magey opening hand with the Antonidas and the Flame Waker, but now seeing more and more control cards, Sheep, Blizzard, Polymorph, etc. So definitely seems like a, a mage deck going for the long game and trying to leverage that really. Yeah, and I would actually love to be Ness's head at the moment and work out whether he, whether he has any knowledge of right. this deck, because mage is difficult anyway in the opening terms, in terms of Mulligan, because tempo and freeze mage are very, very different styles of deck, and you need to Mulligan, you know, to, to, to the specific deck you're against. But this is even, even stranger. We've seen control mages in the past that run a lot of cards like this, uh, and then you know that like Reno coming out just makes it so you have to do one offs of everything. But this is definitely nuts, and there's just I don't know, it's just a collection of good cards. Talking about strange decks, Ness does have the Shadow Flame in his hand. Yep. So it looks like a Demon Zoo in a way. Yeah. But I would say like it looks like a Reno in a way, but there's a second Dark Bomb, so... Yeah, right. he plays, two, he plays two Argus as well. Yeah, I mean, again, like, I, I know what this deck is, but, but because it's knowledge and not intuition, I don't want to reveal stuff that Ness hasn't revealed yet. But it's, it's a deck that people may have run into a couple of times on ladder before. It's kind of a weird combination of, of various Warlock strategies. So basically, we are here at the round four that we are showing today, yeah. double emission stage, with metagame stale, and everybody figured everything out. <laughs> yeah. We're watching two decks that we see for the first time, more or less. Right. Yeah, or just not standard decks. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Um, it's going to be really interesting how, uh, how, how Johnny Stone decides to continue. I mean, even Pyro, it's just not a card you see in like, even like Control Mages or anything like that. This really does just like look like his own homebrew of deck. And it probably does have Reno in there somewhere because we've not seen any doubles or anything oh, yet. Um, but still. I wonder, like yesterday we were uh, talking about surprise effect being uh, very important in Swiss. So that like, your opponent doesn't know what he plays again. He has to make an assumption. Like we made an assumption that the, about the Temple Mage and Freeze Mage. This is absolutely different. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if this was one of the decks that carried Johnny Stone to the top 16 mm -hmm. in the Swiss. And if he decided to keep the same deck for, for this round. Like I've been asking around Johnny Stone and a lot of players didn't even know who he is at the time, even though, uh, well, He's new for us uh, sure. because this is one of the biggest tournaments for him. But he was at DreamHack Leipzig, so he has some tournament experience in Hearthstone and obviously a lot of experience from poker before. Yeah, I think that Discover Trove is actually really interesting as well. He had Torch, Mirror Entity, and Frost Nova. And I imagine Johnny Stone probably got a glance at Ness's game that was obviously being streamed in the, in the last round. So he has probably a, an idea of what this deck is. Yeah. Um, interesting that he took Frost Nova, which just leads me to believe this game is just. It, obviously, it looks like Reno, so it is built to go late game, but we see cards like Mana Worm. It's not completely control, but we know the way he wants to take this game. He wants it to go on and delay it as much as possible, because otherwise, I feel like the Torch would have been a better pick. It's good early, like, cheap removal, and then comes back for a fireball finisher later. Yeah, it's interesting, because just looking at your hand, you have a lot of Frost Nova type effects in your hand already. You have that Blizzard for Freeze, you have kind of Pyromancer, Arcane Explosion for more board wipe effects, so... Um, it feels like the Forgotten Torch was the more different effect to have in your hand yeah. for variety usage, so yeah. The more flexible, Exactly. Right? The commitment to the, the Frost over there definitely indicates that he is kind of all in on that long-term control, control strategy here. Interesting. So there is no demon in the hand for now. There is not, but that can change very quickly. Zombie Chow, not a demon, unfortunately. Um, but hand getting very, very full. And th this deck, as we saw in a previous game, actually has a, a lot of zooey cards in it. It's able to have like quite fast starts early on. We saw him playing against Rogue with basically just a, a zoo start, just straight up. So 
He's uh, been unlucky here just to draw some of the, the later game more situation. Yeah, I think he's got a good turn though. I think Lotheb coin into Dart Bomb is going to feel pretty good. It guards his Void Caller because he doesn't have a demon in his hand, like we said. So he's not going to just trade straight into the Mana Worm. And Lotheb knocks out, you know, the potential for anything too crazy coming out in terms of maybe a Flame Waker or maybe just, you know, Fireball, Frostball or something to clear up the board. What do you guys think is going through Ness's head? Like he, from the cards that he witnessed so far, what is he thinking? Probably what, what a pretty pretty strong what face at the, at the moment. I mean, has he seen anything bizarre yet? He's seen Flame Waker, Mana Work, Arcane Ethereal Explosion. Conjurer, and okay, so Arcane Explosion, sure. So that's that will set off the first alarm bell, but you know, it could just be a kind of weak tempo mage draw at this point with a weird Arcane Explosion tech choice. But again, it comes down to whether he has that prior knowledge of exactly. what he was playing in the tournament. This is kind of nice as well, actually. You get the, the value from the brand in the Dark Peddler. Uh, it's something we discussed, I think, last match, where the Dark Peddler value of brand is actually pretty huge because all the one drops are really good you can get from Warlock. But the Doomsayer. Did, it's, oh my god, did, it's he, actually pick, so did interesting. he pick Frost Nova because he knew he was going to draw Doomsayer? No, but like, the, thing, the thing that's more interesting to me is that there is Tontas Boar, Power Overwhelming, and Abusive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to kill the Doomsayer. <laughs> oh that is certainly <laughs> interesting. I'm just considering whether. He even feels it's worth the Frost Nova Doomsayer here because he can use that later in the game. With that Antonidas in his hand, he can use the Frost Nova Doomsayer on a later turn yeah. to make to guarantee the free tempo to make his Antonidas play the turn after. So um, it's probably something in the back of his mind. Just chooses to use the Blizzard, gets the very, very good news that no demon comes out yeah. from that Void Call. Absolutely. Interesting point here as well is, is he has the Echo, um, but he's in no way at all looks like he's going to form a board. Right. Of any kind. <laughs> like He has all the board clears, but nothing in terms of I mean, minions to actually push it forward. I mean, you, you pretty much always play Echo in a Reno deck, in a Reno mage, because yeah. it's turn 10, just Reno, Echo, and then you have another Reno yeah. in your hand. Like You can just keep it going just back works. to 30 over and over again. Yeah, so. Just at the moment, it's pretty dead, right. that's all. Like, worst case scenario, even if it never becomes a huge blowout, you always have that turn 10 like failsafe of being yeah. able to get yourself a second Reno. What do you guys think about uh, Lothar here instead of uh, Stuntas Boar and Defender Vargas and getting a lot of value, like protecting your brand in a way? I, I think this is fine because with Lothab down, you're still likely to have a very good Argus turn because you just can't imagine Lotheb and Brand's going to die. So although you don't get the instant value, Lotheb just locks out everything your opponent can do or a lot of options your opponent can have this turn. Right, and without another charge minion in his hand, cards like Power Overwhelming, Abusive Sergeant, he has that Dark Peddler as well, which can get him more situational burst damage of the same kind. So he's valuing having that burst damage option in his hand if the game comes down to that point before he draws something better. And uh, after seeing the Blizzard, what information do you get being Ness? Like, you've seen uh, Mana Worm, you've seen uh, Flame Waker, Arcane right. Explosion, Blizzard. I, I think that's probably enough at that point yeah. to start setting off the Reno alarm bells, having seen that many different individual cards. So he'll be uh, carefully keeping track. Again, if he doesn't yet have the knowledge of what's going on, he'll be carefully keeping track of when the first double comes out, if there is one. Yeah, and the Argus does go down, and that is value. Oh yeah, the Dark Peddler so for much one. damage. It's not only a lot of damage, but uh, the, the value from Bran, just dub double Peddler and double and Defender of Argus is so good. Is, is there any, do, well, I was going to say, depending on what he draws, is there any reason you wouldn't abusive here and just take the four damage? Because do, are All you right. really setting up a big burst? So like, probably not. Like even, even if there is a, sure, yeah, Doom has a plan, oh. but even if there's a Faceless Manipulator in the deck and he's going for that chargey combo burst type thing, like it, with the Faceless Manipulator, Abusive Sergeant represents four damage. So yeah, you, so you, you get it's four still damage the same, right, right now. Yeah. But if you're considering the Reno plan, you've, if it's set off those Reno alarm bells in your mind already, you might be a bit worried about committing damage before a Reno comes down in this situation. Because yeah. this will be enough to force Reno anyway, and then you still have that abusive stuff That's very true, yeah. in, in hand off. It, it is also nice. hidden damage overall. So like the Sontas Boar, PO, abusive, like you have the charge mini in your hand, so you will always be able to use abusive, which is uh, seven damage and uh, three more with Hellfire. Yep. So hidden 10 damage from your hand is quite good there. Toshli. Toshli, again, is a card. Um, he will be looking to... He has to answer this board, and the only real way to do that right now is the Frost Nova Doomsayer, but he doesn't have a particularly strong follow-up for that on the next turn. He may even just go for... The, is he going to go Pyro instead? This is interesting. Can you Pyro and Sheep in a way? Uh, so Pyro, Sheep, and, say, Frost Nova would be three damage to the board, um, which wouldn't really get anything done. So he's just going to Pyro just to clear out a couple of... Uh, at least the Young Priestess here and just play the Doomsayer alongside it. This isn't too bad, I guess. 
Yeah, I think what he's doing is here is if the Doomsayer is dealt with, he can do a better sheep next turn. Right. And just reducing everything down just a little bit. But yep, what was unfortunate there is he couldn't even like echo a second Doomsayer to be like, now you've got to answer them both, yeah, you know. Yeah. And that's the pig that's going to fly. <laughs> In a way. Yeah, I mean, sure, it's going to do some work here. But again, he will be sacrificing his potential burst damage as of right now if he wants to protect this board. But it's a pretty nice board to be protecting, you'd have to say. How bad do you feel for that Stone Tusk bar? If PO comes out and Abusive Sergeant, it's basically been infused with demon energy and then shouted at by a guy and then told <laughs> to just attack in and then die at the end of the turn. That's a, that's a pretty horrible life for, for a lowly 1-1 one, one bar. Because the, the other option here is just to Shadow Flame the 7-5 and keep all that burst damage in your hand while still maintaining a board. I don't think that's terrible either. I think that's actually quite all right. No. Yeah, because you presented like your opponent's not building a board up of anything other than this. Right. So Shadow Flame's doing nothing like, at all. But this is definitely a cuter play. I'm definitely for, not, for everyone not but deny the ball. The of this play. And even a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, 9-9. Nine, nine, nine. Nine, yeah, oh, Brand. Wow, yeah, Brand yeah. Rosbeard. Okay, so he does a halfway, halfway in between. Sure. He gained the, the plus four from the uh, from the abusive, so that was fine. Yeah. That I mean, was fine. incredible, actually. I mean, it's it's a similar thing. You know, you have a 7-5 on board instead of a bunch of burst damage lined up in your hand is the is the trade-off there. But yeah, the play makes a lot of sense. He does also get an extra 9-9 nine, nine onto the board that way. So Seems definitely reasonable. can't dispute that play. And also now, just looking at Nessie's hand, a quick overview, a lot of the cards he just fe probably feels like he doesn't even need anymore. But the Owl is the important one. If there's any big taunts come down, or, you know, maybe, you know, a, it's not going to happen, but if he, you know, he's, he is convinced he's Reno, he's probably not expecting another Doomsayer. But if anything just awkward comes down, that yeah, he can just owl off and ignore. So that's a pretty good consider. Because he's got this size of board, right? Even if there's another board freeze that comes out, right? Yeah, he just can owl one of his own minions yeah, exactly. and push through. So is he going for double sheep? Uh, sheep echo sheep. Yeah, I mean that's a possibility, but this uh, clears out a decent amount of damage. So he's left with 18 in play. Heals back up to 23. Uh, so yeah, 9, 18, 22 from the Power Overwhelming, plus the Hellfire, so more than yep. enough to have him covered here. All right. It's going to be so game one to Ness. Much more uh, solid looking out in game one here from Ness. Navigated a couple of really tricky turns there, came up with uh, some solid lines, particularly on that previous turn just then. So getting himself back into decent shape here, and unfortunately we won't get to see any more of that uh, weird looking mage deck from Johnny Storm. We might if Johnny Storm actually defeats Ness and advances in sub eight. Sure. But uh, for now, yep, that's what we've seen. And it's really interesting to, to fight versus deck that you have no idea what's inside. Like, even if you suspect it's a Reno deck, like 30 different cards. Toshi, would you play around that even? Right. I mean, you know, Toshi is, again, understandable. If you're playing a bunch of different cards and you have Antonidas in your deck, then Toshi yeah. seems to make a lot of sense. But yeah. the, dr the, the turn he drew it there, it just was going to be way too slow to do anything. Even if he got, say, the freeze spare part, it wasn't going to get the job done. And wow, Johnny, Johnny Stone is just taking the meta and throwing it out the window. He says, mid everyone is playing mid-range Druid. I'm going to put Foul Reaver in my deck. Awesome. <laughs> and this matchup should be good for, for Johnny in a way? Or at least, like, normally Zoo versus Druid, Zoo has the... Oh, it's actually not a Zoo deck, so... Yeah. yeah well. uh, th I mean, there, is a, there are a lot of Zooey minions in it. It just has a lot of extra late-game stuff as well. So what do you guys think? Like, um, I, I tried to make an assumption that this is a zoo deck, but uh, who has an advantage in this matchup if this is the aggressive trade that we see right now? Yeah, well, we see Druid of the Saber in hand there, so you've got to presume it even, you know, you've got to presume this is more than just Druid with Fell Reavers. Right. It's like an aggressive Druid with Juggler, Saber, Saber yep. and Fel Yeah, exactly. I mean, because there's always an option where, like, well, you could just put Fell Reaver in Druid and just have it as a different five drop. But, uh, but yeah. I think the Warlock's still going to look pretty okay, unless the Druid uh, really runs over the Warlock early on. With the fact that we've seen like double Argus, the heal bot that we can see right. in hand, uh, and all the trade up potential, like the power overwhelming, the abusive, just so well versus Druid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would tend to still favor the, the Warlock in this situation as well, but that Fel Reaver could have a massive impact if it comes down here because um, the, the trade-off with this deck of putting the extra late game and win conditions into the deck is that you lose your early game consistency. So you don't get significantly ahead on the board as you would with a regular Zoo deck to be able to deal with a Fel Reaver when it comes I out. I think it's also important that Johnny actually used the coin uh, in a greedy way, just coining Juggler, and uh, he missed turn three thanks to that. He didn't have a free job to follow up. 
right? Yeah, and also we've, I don't believe we've seen a big game Hunter from Ness yet. This deck of his has a lot of stuff in it, but I don't think we've seen big game Hunter yet. It might be in the deck, but uh, that's definitely would have been an easy out versus the Foul Reaver. Right. Um, uh, Is there a world in which you don't pick P.O.? There are very few worlds in which you don't pick PO from Dark Peddler, but Mort Coil is definitely one of the other big premium choices that you can get from it. But yeah, I think particularly when you're playing this matchup against yeah, Jade, exactly, even if yeah. you don't know that there's a Fell Reaver coming soon, you expect some kind of mid rangey thing that Power Overwhelming. <laughs> That's the thing. Really even, even Aggro Druid still plays things like Druid of the Claw. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you pick PO is still going to get some really good use. It's not like they're playing all one drops. Right. Absolutely. Uh, right so now, Ness, Ness knows exactly what uh, what Druid this is because after seeing yeah. Juggler into uh, Druid of the Saber, mm -hmm. you have to at least expect the, the deck to be aggressive. Yeah, for sure. So he'll, he'll have Fell Reaver in mind. That's he knows that's one of the big ways that he can just get rushed out of this game so power overwhelming might be the the tool he needs to be able to create enough damage on the board uh, the other option he has of course is just to try and argus and wall out the fail reaver when it comes down which is is going to require him to be ahead on the board so we'll see how the game develops from here and he did take the mortal coil over the power overwhelming yeah he did yeah. and now for johnny stone um he had the decision if he wants to keep her of the grove one of the minions or just go with the shredder but shredder was not really contested by both minions so a good decision there Nope, it's a 3-2. You saw Nessa hovering over the Mortal Coil in his hand there, hoping that a one-health minion was going to come out of the Shredder, but uh, Johnny Stone gets a nice 3-2 here that he can at least use to have some sort of impact on this board. And uh, if he decides to go for the Fell Reaver, it's, it's a bit tricky because there's a lot of cards in Nessa's hand, so Fell Reaver now might not be the best choice. Uh, he can go for Keeper, he could also play Lothab. Yeah, I, th I think the main issue there is if he traded in and played Fell Reaver, he dies to one power overwhelming. Yeah. We, well, the Fell Reaver dies to one power overwhelming, sorry. So it's just not worth. The odds are so high that you've got power overwhelming in your hand by this turn. That yeah. Void Cooler draw is pretty phenomenal. Uh, with both Malganis and Jaraxxus in the hand, cluttering it up, having that Void Cooler now is pretty great. But he's going to go ahead and just Emperor this hand, get a ton of value out of it that way. Yeah, from what I've seen, like, uh, Johnny Stone wants to go for face uh, because he's an aggressive druid and we see Savitra as well. The plan for the deck is just, uh, it's similar to face Shaman and face Hunter in a way that you want to put your opponent at 14 or even less, like, you have more options to finish the game with Druid of the Saber with Savage Roar and Druid of the Claw charging. You have double living brutes in your deck as well. So mainly going for face. By playing Thorison, he kind of baits out trading mm -hmm. because you cannot really leave Thorison on board. Yeah, it, six cards exactly. And on turn six, the Druid wants to be dropping big minions, right? And it's not going to... Unless Druid of the Claw charge comes out, but even then that's a victory. Um, you normally do want to drop the minions. And if this pulled out like a Wrath, then it just throws the Druid curve out the window. Oh, man, this is ballsy because... There is six cards and they are reduced, so there is a big chance that uh, you will get milled and uh, milled a lot of cards. But on the other hand, Johnny Stone recognizes that this is a bad situation already. So he needs to go for a bi the biggest play to have uh, a chance to win this game. Yep, I don't think he had too many options there. He could have done the second keep of the Grove and Hero Powered and traded the keep into the Emperor. And then that leaves a 2-4 and a 2-3 up. Uh, but again, that just like passes it over to the wall. I can say after Thorazen, do what you want, you know, drop two to three right. even minions, and then the jury is just always behind, whereas at least this, if it doesn't get dealt with easily, well, the Emperor might have to trade into it anyway, so it still doesn't get that second tick, and then if you can't deal with it, you know, this is the card that runs away with the game. Can we just go back and quickly live in the world where he took Power Overwhelming, and he has three mana Void Caller, zero mana Power Overwhelming, and Shadow Flame yeah. this turn? Like, that would be such a sick outcome, just trade in with the 2-3 and get either Jaraxxus or Malganis on the board right now. That, that coil value. That coil value, yeah. So he is still going to go for the uh, the Void Caller. Uh, does get the Malganis out, so with the Malganis can just quite happily trade the Emperor now. He doesn't really need that 5-5 five, five with the discounts on the board anymore. 9-7 in play, bunch of cards milled, looking in a very, very comfortable position. Absolutely, especially because the uh, aggressive Druid normally doesn't run big game hunters. I think you might run one, but... Uh, I, I, I can see it as like a tech choice in a tournament. Yeah, sure, yeah, but yeah. Like the common ladder list doesn't run them. Yeah, exactly. I actually just like Dr. Boom here. You just need to do something and, and everything else isn't even close, unfortunately. And then if anything survives, like either Dr. Boom can trade into Marganis next turn, mm -hmm. which is just go face. The Boom bots could damage it enough to maybe get like Keeper the Grove and Living Roots for an additional four damage. So there's a lot of options here. Everything else just too slow and too defensive in, in my opinion. So do you start with Peddler now? Just see what you can draw, maybe to deal with the, the Boom bots and 
Like, if you can slam face with Mulganis, you can probably take that turn. Yeah, it, I mean... Unless... Well, it can be dangerous. If there's Keeper of the Grove, then right. you know you're playing versus aggressive Druid. Yeah, I mean, it's just how big a risk you want to take here. If you if you consider yourself the aggressor from this position, or whether you feel confident Abusive Sergeant is a, a pretty helpful draw. If he was to pick up something from the Dark Peddler here, uh, Power Overwhelming or Soulfire, for example, he could use the 2-3 now to trade into it. But yeah. he's going to go for the more uh, solid and consistent line with the Sylvanas. Yeah. He is going to oh. represent himself as the aggressor. <laughs> so with this, is there 8 plus 6? 14, 16 damage after the silence, right? Yep. Yeah, so a little bit short. So uh, Johnny Stein is going to have to find some way to respect here. And if, if he does uh, decide he needs to get that 7 damage to face and silences the Malganis, that means that he can't react to the Sylvanas either. So yeah. it's a really, really awkward situation for him to be in right now. It's probably like He probably needs to trade in the Malganis anyway. And then maybe silence Sylvanas and play Shredder? I mean, so... <laughs> He has another option of silence in the Sylvanas, trading in with the um, with the Doctor Boom, and then running the bomb into the two-two, and either hoping it kills it off. The, the only thing I'm thinking is if he leaves the Malganis alive, even on 16, are you that afraid of additional burst? I think you've seen Dark Bomb, Hellfire, Power Overwhelming yeah. from this deck already, so there's a lot of cards that end because up. Because le leaving the Doctor Boom up represents actually a serious threat next turn. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you know you'd hope that the Malganis goes into Doctor Boom, and then if it doesn't, then you have you know Force of Nature. Uh, well, sorry, has Savage Roar and a, you know the Living Roots to do something there. But he has gone with a safer play, just removing Malganis, Silence in the Air, Sylvanas. So this is still okay, just uh, definitely a lot safer. Yeah, definitely, yeah. especially because yeah, he's getting closer to turn nine where Savage Roar, Force of Nature will be available if he picks four somewhere along the way. And uh, having this Living Roots on turn 10 is a uh, 60 damage combo. Yep, so Morkul's a nice draw here. Uh, let's the, the two untrade up into the piloted shredder, which is pretty good going here. Cut purse, not too big of a deal. Coins aren't going to have too huge an effect on the game right now. Although, it lets him play Fel Reaver low feb next turn if he uh, is able to, to get the coin. So, he may just choose to respect that. But Ness's hand stacked full of options right now. Yeah. Uh, proactive stuff with the Imgang boss and the Void Caller. Also, you know, um, flexible stuff with Dark Peddler, but also the Heal Bot is huge. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he's gone for this play, actually. I thought uh, Heal Bot Void Caller just felt really good there. Yeah, I agree. You, just, you heal way yeah. out of range of any sort of uh, serious damage. Mm -hmm. And also, the Void Caller, at worst, well, there's not even a worse. It will pull in Gangboss or Draxus. Because against Druid, you don't really want to play Draxus a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. Like, you, against Druid, Draxus is a 315 is what you want. Like, you yeah, exactly. Yeah, You don't want to have it in your, like, actually play it and have 15 right. health because you can just die. So uh, I kind of like the Void Caller there. I don't really see uh, the, a huge benefit of, of doing that play. But he did heal, which was the important part, I think. Right. Yeah, also, he is threatening Lethal next turn. He has uh, six extra damage in hand. So if Sylvanas survives, that's uh, 11 damage, basically. Yeah, which I guess I was just thinking, right? Just play the Dark Peddler just to try and pick up another Power Overwhelming, yeah, another yeah, Abusive yeah. Sergeant, Soulfire, whatever it is. Just ramp up the damage and just put the pressure back on the aggro deck and, and represent yourself as the aggressor in the matchup. So what do you do as Johnny Stone? Like, we were talking about the possible coin for the River Lotha, but then he just dies. So <laughs> yeah. probably not a good play, but yeah. <laughs> Savage Roar to maybe start trading into minions. I think, hmm, I think he almost has to. So he, I think he almost has to Savage Roar Living Roots. Yeah. So he can kill the Sylvanas and then and maybe, maybe kill the three, three three. I guess it does leave him enough mana left over yeah, to play one of the five three. drops. So um, Loth Herb's the defensive option to try not to die this turn. But honestly, like, do you win this game if you don't play your own eight eight there? I'm not really sure. So. He's going to go with the, with the defensive option, which leaves, what, seven damage on board? No, five it, damage it's on enough board. To, to win. And Abusive Sergeant is seven. Soulfire is still playable. So, yeah, that's plenty of damage. And Ness is uh, making a splash here with this kind of interesting twist on the, on the Warlock deck. Yeah, like, what it's, is this Warlock deck? It's, it's so funny, though, because it, it's, it's literally, like, just Warlock. You know, like, it doesn't do anything crazy. It's, like, just straight up mid-range Warlock. Mid -range yeah. Is it not just, a bad way it to just it. plays minions that are good and wins. Like, that's literally, it, it has, has a good amount of healing, good taunts. It reminds me of the, the Warlock version that we've seen a long time ago. I think after GVG that released? Mm -hmm. Or after BRM, there was this, like, Demon Zoo. Which was not a zoo, like it was more like a hybrid between demon, warlock, and handlock, but right. not in a way. Like there was a lot of healing 
involved, the Void Callers, and you still yep. had Malganis and Jaraxxus. So basically, like a, a mid range, con not, not control, like mid range Warlock, basically, with yeah. demons, which is not a demon handlock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think um, I think like it being mid range, it's it's weird to just say, oh my god, like mid range warlock. Because you say about any other class, and you're just like, yeah, sure, you know. But like, because warlock's so specialized and so polarizing yeah. in, in the yeah. decks that it creates, and just to see straight away, well, you know, I can put a lot of good cards in this deck, and I can also draw an additional card every turn. Right. I'm just going to outvalue my opponent. If you it just works. Look at like the classification of a mid-range deck, right? Like a mid-range deck is just like a, a deck that plays like a curve of dudes and then has like a power spike somewhere along the curve. So like Druid has it with Innovate and they have it with Combo. Um, mid-range Paladin would do it with Quartermaster, yep. for example. Yeah, you know, this is just that kind of thing. You just try and curve out, and then your power spikes are things like Void Cooler, Void Malganis, Cooler, yeah. and so I mean it works. It's a theory, and it has win conditions at the top as well. So it's a really interesting twist. It's a deck that um, I know a few people are uh, really rating as quite highly now. I didn't know Ness was playing personally himself, but yeah, really interesting deck. Yeah, definitely, and it works for him because right now he is 2-0 and on a good way to win as well. So he'll be facing Patron, and this is the list with Corcoran Elite. It should work. He has Shadow Flame, he has Hellfire. We've seen one Hellfire, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, we've seen so Hellfire and Shadow Flame. So yeah, I think this is a, a versus the sort of more standard Reno Warlock. This is just lacking the Twist in Nether, I imagine. Right. Uh, and, and the Demon... Uh, Demon Wrath. Sh Demon Wrath, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. I was going for Fire, Flame, Shadow. It's just Fuse. all the typical Warlock yeah. words. Yeah. Um, yeah, Demon Wrath, sorry. So it uh, doesn't have quite the, the volume of AoE, but as long as, you know, he has other things, like the Argus's are quite, quite a big deal, actually. Yeah, but because it's mid-range, uh, yeah. like, as we see already, he's just packing minions on board, and this should help him to deal with the early aggression from Patron. The only thing that he will be needing is something to deal with the Patrons, and we already see Patron, Death Spite, and Inner Rage for, for Johnny Stone. Yep, that is uh, pretty interesting stuff. So, coining out Death Spite this turn, he's kind of obligated then not to use his Death Spite, which kind of wastes the, the, the investment on the mana. So, yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something that is not coin Death Spite this turn. <laughs> Anything. That right, is but I mean, not that's it. Yeah, I know. Your, you your two Death Spite swings are allocated for turn four and turn yeah, five yeah. with this hand. That's just how it works. There is a Shadow Flame, guys. So That draw is huge because. Uh, regardless of the Warlock, unless it's Zoo, you know, any sort of more late game control Warlock with a, a lot of AoE. Yeah. Um, a kind of semi-serious way to play this deck uh, in form of Patron is to make Patrons and hope he doesn't have AoE. Mm -hmm. And that sounds really silly, but a lot of the time it's just what you have to do. You can't like never play the Patrons in case they get AoE down. Like that's just, that's how you lose a yeah, lot of the games. Honestly, like when we, when we think about Shadow Flame, Hellfire, we see so many Reno Locks that we might be thinking like there is a one Shadow Flame, one Hellfire. It doesn't have to be necessarily. Maybe he's playing double Hellfire, one Shadow Flame, or double Shadow uh, yeah. Flame. Double flame like, uh, like Handlock used to do. Exactly, like with two, exactly. Two of, the, two of one, one of the other, regardless. Yeah. Probably based on meta, So three AoEs in the yeah. deck, at least. What I will say, like just to be the momentary naysayer, sure, that Shadow Flame is important, but the way this Death Spite is going to line up, it's very possible that his board just gets cleared. Yeah, he just in actually which case, he has to have a minion from hand to be able to play with that Shadow Flame, which right now he's not going to have the seven mana, for example, to play BGH yeah. Shadow Flame. No so. coin to get up right. to that either. So. Yeah. so he's not quite safe yet. He's Although, fighting. That Abusive Sergeant is a pretty important draw because we, if he can just get something to stick to the board now, then the Abusive on a minion that sticks plus the Shadow Flame will be a great answer on the yep. following turn. He still doesn't have any demons outside of the Void Caller. He does not. I think um, the Belch is probably going to be the, the best route of hoping a minion sticks. I agree. And this seems weird just to throw a Belcher into a Death Spite <laughs> turn to say, hey, buddy, have this. Like, yeah. it's free. But yeah, this is actually great recognition from Ness that he needs to stick a minion to the board this turn or else he's going to lose the game. Oh, he's but doing a lot of damage, actually. So at the moment, Johnny Stone is at 18 and uh, attacking to the Belcher is extra free damage. Sure. Uh, he will get the heal back from the Zombie Child this turn, though, and uh, the, the Patron turn is going to come out. Can he actually clear, though? Mm -hmm. Can he actually clear because he has Coin Whirlwind? Uh, no, because the Death Spike won't hit the Slime. Ah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So the Slime will be a 1-1 one -one yep. if he Coins Whirlwind. Yep. Ah, okay. So at the moment, Johnny Stone is quite happy about uh, the patron turn, but we know that there will be slime remaining. Oh, he's going to commit the whirlwind as well, just to get rid of that one-one on the board. And this is now going to be a blowout with the abusive side of Shadow Flame. Yeah, it's going to be really rough. But to be fair to Johnny, this is not particularly a misplay. Oh no! You know, like this, this is the correct this, line. This is how you win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just wanted to point out that he is going to get wrecked this turn. Um, but this is a this is a pretty good play. 
I mean, having said that, I'm not entirely sure that the second whirlwind was necessary because what what does that one one do on the board that like the the one the, one that you left the, behind didn't? I don't know if it was because he just wanted the better patron board. I feel like four patrons is enough, right? Like either they AOE you in that situation or they don't. Um, maybe like buff plus dart bomb or like Argus plus dart bomb or something can get some work done. I think with two one ones, you definitely kill one of the minions and then another abusive or a PO right. can yeah, kill another it, three three and then. Did you really like? I, I mean, it was just a whirlwind and he had one whirlwind in hand anyway, so. On his side, it didn't change that much. Yeah, no. I, I think on Johnny's side, that was fine. Yeah, I didn't absolutely. think it was bad. That's what I just wanted to make sure we noted that this wasn't a bad play. No, it was a, uh, an excellent that's play all. from Johnny Stone. Just like there was the Shadow Flame. Yeah. Uh, an interesting fact, though, there is uh, Mr. Finley and Corker on the same deck, which means that this is his own take. Like, normally you have Finley plus uh, Shredders. Uh, I did the version that Crane first uh, were, yeah. were hit rank one legend with a, he also a, had a Finley couple of months was and Finley Corcoran. and Corcoran. Yeah, yeah okay. So, um, I, again, I think like Patron is in this position where it's not like cards necessarily go together and there's like two or three different versions you can run. There's literally like just eight, swap out eight cards. to ten yeah, yeah. flex cards that everyone just sort of puts together into their favorite sure. version. We saw a okay, pretty cool play there just the previous turn where he created enough damage on the board that buffed the frothing up to being able to be, uh, be big game hunted and just insta killed, which is nice little, you know, just, just using what you've got there to uh, destroy the boards. So that's always nice. How important will be the steady shot? Versus Warlock, steady shot normally is winning games because then both hero powers work in tandem. Both try to kill They're the They're both Warlock. trying to kill the same person, yeah. <laughs> I think versus, I mean, versus this Warlock, it's better. Uh, for, for the Warlock, I mean, because he has additional heal and he has bigger minions. Versus Zoo, it's probably more of a problem because you kind of need to tap more with Zoo because you float so much mana every turn. Whereas as we can see, you know, Ness has got plenty of plays to do without having to feel like he needs to live tap at the moment. Right, and I just want to make a general point, like going back to the, the start of this series and perhaps the last series, Ness was playing extremely slowly. And now, just as this game's developing and he's in a 2-0 lead, he's obviously feeling much yeah. more comfortable and his play is just hitting a natural rhythm. And I think you can easily say he's playing this series so much better. Way better, way better, yeah. Unless there's a PO. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just Stone Tusk Boar every time. It's yeah. just apparently okay. we're stuck Discover taking... Discover a Stone Tusk Boar and two other cards. I was thinking about possible lethal. Like, if you Dark Peddler first, if you get a PO, would that be enough? That would be seven damage from hand and uh, how much damage he had on board? Uh, I don't... Would he, you know, he wouldn't, would he have had the mana? Oh, he played Sylvanas, yeah, of course. Like, before playing Sylvanas. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. So, like, six plus, uh, he had, like, two, six, eight, 14, probably not. But he, even, like, just going back to what you're saying about Ness, in all honesty, the previous set, and from what I've seen before, I wouldn't have been surprised if he traded Voidcaller and, like, Dart Bomb the 7-7. Seven, seven. Right. Just, just to remove a minion off the board, whereas now he's like, no, I'm going to go aggressive and finish this game, which is the way he needs to play. Being able to just identify when to go aggressive is super important in Arthur. Yeah, definitely. And he's playing really well, absolutely. Because because of the steady shot, he probably needs to be a bit faster. So yeah, well now we can seven, out, right? seven damage on board, an extra three in the hand is ten. Has the Iron Beak out to bypass the taunt, so no Brands Brombeard, not quite gonna do it. He can fairly safely tap here. And uh, he's just gonna go ahead and dart bomb and steal that armor smith, generate the board here. Yeah, and he can brand into Lothab, which definitely feels good when you're making your opponent's spells cost. 10 plus mana. It's a pretty satisfying play. Not yeah. quite as satisfying as it is against Freeze Mage, where you, <laughs> no, he just like, you will not play any. No, by the rage. God, yeah. <laughs> well, he can still play oh. Rage, I guess. Oh. Uh, he could play 10 <laughs> mana in a Rage. Yeah, yeah, that would be a sick turn, Nymph. So this is going to be an uphill climb and almost impossible, I think, for Johnny, because uh, as we talk about the hero power, you've got to bear in mind that Steady Shot isn't happening every turn. You know, like, uh, you can't squeeze in a steady shot every single turn yeah. uh, at the moment. And right. you can tell because he's only on 21 health. You know, he's, had, he's got so much time he can freely tap because he's not expecting to do any more damage. Is Jaraxxus lethal? That's a 7, 10, 11. 11. Two off. Two off. Uh, wait. Uh, no, yeah, two off. Two, two armor, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but still, this is an amazing position for Ness. And uh, just steadily dealing damage to Patron. Patron will need to draw cards this turn, so he will not be able to do much. It yep. kind of, was it kind of, I mean, it's not really going to change anything, I don't think, but would you have just played Draxus because you had the taunt? And just taunt up the, uh, taunt up the low I don't know, I still think you, you like, you just That's potentially expose yourself, yeah, okay. maybe to like Death Spite and an Execute and then a Grom top deck or something, I don't know, it just feels you, like an unnecessary. You're so, yeah, you're so far ahead, why, yeah, why yeah. mess about, right? 
I, I can easily see you like going into your own head and inventing a world where you lose if you play yes. Jaraxxus, whereas this way around, I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? And this does it. He advances Three top zero. eight on the, on the back of his amazing Warlock deck. Yeah, mid-range Warlock. Uh, Who would have thought? But a uh, really solid play, though. I think that was the key. Um, just really solid play from Ness. He, I think, just understood a bit more and just relaxed and just took the matchups as, as they were supposed to be played instead of just like being like, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose, I don't want right. to lose. It's like you can see the experience that he got from the previous match yeah. where he was super stressed, he got some, uh, he made some questionable plays, but this time just uh, playing his Warlock deck and absolutely surprising his opponent. Even though he faced this uh, weird Reno Mage mm -hmm. from Johnny Stone, who was able to, to keep his composure and just uh, think about every turn, just. Take his time.